Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on regional economic conditions in the business sector. My name is Carmiana Matson. I am the Assistant Vice President of Regional Outreach and Public Programs at the Minneapolis Fed. Before I turn it over to our speaker today, Ron Wirtz, a few items of note. We will be following up with all registered attendees of this webinar at some point next week with an email that will include a link to the video of today's presentation, as well as a copy of Ron's slides. And Ron will have a few minutes at the end of today's presentation to take questions. So if you have questions for Ron, you can type those in the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom window, and I will pose those to him at the conclusion of the webinar. And then before you sign off at the end of the webinar, you'll be presented with a survey. We'd love to get your feedback on this webinar and future events in our series. I'll also be placing a link in the chat box to some of those future events in our series. We hope you'll join us for our next general or our next con economic conditions webinar on conditions in the construction sector, which is on September 10th. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ron. Thank you, Carmi, and good morning, everyone. I really appreciate everyone's time this morning. I, uh, on a nice kind of wet Tuesday, um, we're going to talk about the most recent general business survey that the Minneapolis Fed done. This is a quarterly business survey. And before I get started with the results today, um, I need to give you my disclaimer slide just to tell you that all the views expressed here are the presenters and not necessarily those of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis or the Federal Reserve System. We had a really nice crowd today. I really appreciate everyone attending today. Um, I'm going to go over a few things that for those that have participated in this in the past, um, there's going to be a, just a little bit of repeat. But for those that haven't, for the, um, the way we do this survey is that I conduct this through partners. So for this particular survey, I have about three dozen, excuse me, about five dozen partners, uh, chambers of commerce, economic development agencies, government agencies, and others that help distribute my survey out to businesses across the district. So I wanted to say thank you first to all my partners. Um, it's really useful. This this gives us this gives the bank tremendous amount of intelligence and the beauty of it is that I can give it back to not only my partners but also to their members who take the survey uh, itself and for survey takers that might be here as well thank you for sharing your intelligence with us so just FYI, this is one actually the one of the largest regular business surveys among the 12 uh, Federal Reserve District banks. I'm always looking for more partners. The more partners I get, the more and the, the broader the reach for this particular survey. So if you happen to be with an organization or be a member of an organization that you'd like to see distributed, have this survey distributed to them, you can leave a note in the chat box for me later and I'd be happy to follow up. So onto the survey itself. That's what you came here for. That's what I'm gonna talk about. So our general business survey was conducted in late July. We got just about 500 responses from Minnesota, the Dakotas, Montana, and then the western portion of Wisconsin and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. I want to remind everyone that's watching, these results are a snapshot. So this is not a scientifically sampled survey. It's more of a convenient sample. We do think this is a very good snapshot of current conditions, but in terms of their relation to previous surveys, they're not always exactly um, comparable. So I would just ask that you take all survey results uh, with some caution. So let me give you first some quick takeaways from the survey. So the most recent three month period, firms told us that they saw pretty solid growth among, uh, among all of them. Now there were some variations and I would say most, um, most notable are the, difference, the differences by size and I'll talk quite a bit about that, but there are also, also some differences by ownership. In general, we saw that workforce growth was pretty slow among all firms, probably hampered by labor availability, but it's much less so among larger firms. So they actually saw um, workforce growth and fairly significant in some cases, and that matters. And I'll explain more as we get into the survey itself. And it's a similar story for wages. So we saw generally moderate growth among all reporting firms, but it was stronger at larger firms they still face significant challenges. Regardless of your size, there are a lot of challenges that still are, are facing virtually all businesses and not and most of them right now actually are not COVID related. We don't know whether or not that's gonna continue with regards to the, to the Delta variant. But again, this was done a little bit before that surge has, that has come recently. Generally speaking, the the outlook seems quite optimistic, you know. But again, I just want to I want to emphasize that these results kind of precede because it was in July. We've seen a little bit of increase in the Delta variant here, as well as you know nationwide, of course. And how exactly that affects um, 
their the business activity more recently it's hard to say so let's talk about let's talk first about uh, recent revenue and staffing trends so again those that have watched this uh, webinar before you'll be familiar with the general color scheme but I want for those that are new I want to just review real quick so the first and kind of main question is we ask with the last three months of revenue and how they compare to three different um, uh, time periods both the prior quarter the same period last year and then expectations for the coming three months so that's top to bottom in terms of reading the color scheme green means good red means bad the deeper the color the more um, the more extreme the outcome okay so generally what we see is that we've uh, firms reported positive revenue growth overall both year over year and quarter over quarter Okay, so roughly about twice as many firms saw revenue gains as declines. So again, I think overall we're seeing growth and that's that's great. The outlook itself, the very bottom chart, the very bottom bar on that um, is even more upbeat. Uh, so it's uh, so what we're seeing is really a nice trend in terms of moving forward. When you start to um, splice the data for different kinds of traits, what to me what stands out the most is that size really matters. Large firms are continuing to see stronger revenue trends overall. Um, so if you take a look at the left chart, what I've done is uh, provided a, a, a variation by firm size. So you have the largest firms on top, sole proprietor and small firms on the very bottom. And what you'll see is um, on the very bottom, you have more deep red, so more negative revenue trends there and smaller increase, a smaller number or share of firms that are seeing increases. You go to the top, as you work up, generally speaking, you see more firms having having increases in revenue over, over the last three months compared to the prior quarter. And you go to the very largest firms, you're seeing a very small share seeing negative revenue trends and a much larger share seeing positive revenue trends. So generally, advantage goes to scale here. Not necessarily surprising, but these are, you know, I would say these are very, um, uh, very, notable results and they're also very consistent with other survey with other past surveys in terms of the coming three months I would say the good news here is that for employer firms so all of those that employ anybody you're seeing positive revenue expectations going forward very positive even with sole proprietors you're seeing things even out to a little bit close to par So I also, we, because we do this across the ninth district, I always like to give at least some information by state. I'm gonna give you only one slide for some reasons that I think hopefully will become pretty obvious. So we don't have great uh, spread of, of responses across all states. I believe every, every portion of the district had at least 25 responses. It's not a huge number, but it at least gives some, some uh, first insights. And what you see here is that, um, again, the comparison is the last three months compared to the prior quarter. And what you see here in this chart is that Minneapolis and St. Paul and then greater Minnesota firms kind of appear to be lagging the rest of the district. Here's what I would tell you is that, that the, the response composition really matters in terms of why this chart looks the way it does. And that's because Minneapolis and St. Paul and greater Minnesota had the highest shares of small firms, including roughly about 20% of sole proprietors. As I showed you in the other in the other uh, chart, size really matters in terms of how your how your general business experience has been. So I think that probably um, is part of the reason why you see a little bit more negative uh, responses there, or less positive, I would put it. If you take a look at some of the other states that did better, for example, North Dakota, it had the biggest share of large firms, <clears throat> followed by South Dakota, <clears throat> and and for <clears throat> excuse me. In Montana and North Dakota, they had no sole proprietors respond to this survey. And as you saw in the previous slide, sole proprietors are the ones that are struggling the most in terms of their revenue trends. So what I would tell you is this chart, if you were to weigh those factors, most of these results are gonna compress very close together. And it kind of reinforces the effect that firm size has in survey results. And that's why I'm gonna show you more slides as it relates to size than any of the other variables. <clears throat> I am gonna tell you a little bit about sectors though. The good news here is there isn't as much to tell you as there have been in previous surveys. Generally speaking, there is still variation, but all the sectors reported net revenue growth. Again, I, I'm only here, I'm only comparing the last three months compared with the prior quarter. So generally they're trending in the right direction. Accommodation, food and drink, they are the top by a long shot. Part of that is the comparison period. 
Um, they are continuing to grow and they're really accelerating and they are, continue, they are expecting to continue do, doing so going forward. Um, but generally speaking, I think we're, we're seeing positive results by sector, both recently and going forward. We also ask firms to identify their ownership status, whether you're a minority or woman-owned or veteran-owned firm. And what we see is that we, they the results that there continue to lag, the all of the above or norms tend to do much better than minority and woman-owned owned firms. The good news is that um, you know the future expectations are more positive. They're more net positive for both groups, both minority-owned and women-owned, but they are still lagging. So let's turn a little bit to workforce demand now. So it's something obviously that the Fed follows very closely. We're very interested in whether firms are hiring and whether they're having success hiring. And so we ask firms to compare their, uh, their current staffing levels to three months ago and then what they expect going forward uh, roughly in six months. And here, the, the interesting part here is that um, we've been here and we know there are lots of jobs out there. Uh, we've been hearing about strong demand, and we had, some of the recent numbers from the BLS also suggest that there's been fairly strong uh, job, uh, job employment growth. And what this says is that firms are saying, well, it's actually been a lot more, um, a lot more flat. Uh, just about the same percentage said they were, they were lower in staff as those that said they were higher in staff. The good news is that expected staffing levels in six months are much more positive. Now, there's a really big but here. And I'm going to back. I'm going to take one step back to explain it. So, if you look at all firms, they're really not created equal, especially when it comes to employment and then their overall effect on the economy. So, large firms are a very tiny share of all firms. This is a U.S. measure. So, the blue lines are the share of firms by size. So, those firms with ten, or, uh, excuse me, less than ten employees, make up roughly three quarters of all firms. If you go to the very right, the, the share of uh, firms with 1,000 or more employees is less than 1%, okay? Now look at the orange bar. That's the share of employment. And as you can see, the share of employment sh shifts very, very strongly to the right, to larger firms. So thus, they really are driving job growth disproportionately. Um, just so you're aware, in terms of our distribution for firm size, it roughly follows um, the, blue, the blue bars. So we have many more that are small firms that respond, sole proprietors, small firms, and, it, and a smaller share of large firms. I use a little bit different category, and I have a larger share of large firms, but it's only like 5 to 6% of the largest category, but it does actually give us a better sample to make sure that those large, that we're getting a decent measure for large firms. So what does the data show us on, on workforce by, by firm size? Basically, what it sh shows is what some of the other charts have shown, is that the large firms are doing are, are having more success in increasing their staffing levels. So if you look at, again, top to bottom, what you're seeing is not that there isn't any volatility or any cuts being made among firms of a larger size, but you see less of it at the very largest, uh, at the very top of firms, and you're seeing much, uh, much greater likelihood of them increasing staff as you get higher. Roughly the same with, um, ex with the expectation going forward. What I would say though is even here, there's a little bit more positive note, even among the very lowest firms, you know, one, those hiring or those uh, employing one to 10 people, even that's on net, on net positive right now. So again, going forward, I think there's real positive news in general because large firms make up are, are really the drivers of employment. The fact that there's strong growth there, I think matches what we're seeing in some of the data. So what are some of the challenges and other metrics going forward? You know, we are seeing growth. I think there's some positive sentiment out there. I wouldn't want to leave you with the idea that, that things are really, um, that we don't have some, some challenges ahead. So we asked firms to pick two of, of, out of a list of the 10 here, about what are the greatest challenges to operating capacity and productivity. And generally speaking, the three to the very right kind of really stick out and we're hearing more and more about this. So it's supply chain disruptions, price increases and labor availability really rockets above all of them. But those three are really the thing that are challenging most firms most often. 
in terms of to maybe unpack at least a couple of these in terms of labor availability, what we're hearing is that, you know, we know there are a lot of job openings. They don't necessarily um, equal job hirings and labor conditions, at least from what these uh, what the most recent uh, two snapshot surveys tell us is that labor conditions continue to get tighter. So the left the left green bar is the most recent. The yellow bar to the right is the April survey. And you're seeing kind of across the board, we're seeing it go to, we're seeing that um, firms are saying it is more difficult to find labor. Wages are also rising, <clears throat> excuse me. So we asked, um, we're always trying to get a new angle on wages because it's one area that we don't necessarily have great data on. So we asked about new hires in this case, as well as existing uh, workforce. We don't see much, much difference in those. Generally speaking, we're seeing what I would call among all firms, a fairly moderate increase in wages. About one third said wages had risen by 3% or more. It's not bad. It's not historically crazy is what I would say. But again, here I'm gonna show you that size uh, differential again, and wages by firm size do tell a different story. So again, if you look at um, wage change by firm, what you see is that there's the strongest wage growth among the largest firms. And given that they are hiring the most people, we are seeing stronger wage growth than what the overall sample would suggest. Okay, so among all employers with more than 50 employees, almost half gave a wage increase of over 3%. And importantly, only 13% gave no wage increase. If you look at um, the, the firms that responded that, were, that had one to 10 employees, there's actually a fairly large gap, about 40% that gave no wage increase compared to 13% for firms that were higher than that, that didn't give any wage increase. So generally speaking, you're seeing more incidents of wage increase and larger increases as firm size goes up. Prices are also um, it kind of increasingly on businesses' minds. They're always on business mind, but because we've been seeing price, we've been seeing price increases of late. I think it's really top of mind for many. Here we asked about um, input prices or wholesale levels, and then we also asked about final or retail prices to customers. And two thirds said they've seen wholesale prices increase by five percent since uh, 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 from pre-pandemic levels. Excuse me, and we are seeing that a lot of those price increases from vendors are flowing through to customers themselves. So um, in this survey, 51, roughly 50% said final prices to their customers rose by more than 5%. In April, it was about 38%. So we're kind of seeing increases not only at the wholesale level, but we're seeing it transition to more, um, re uh, to more um, businesses uh, funneling it through to their customers as well. So in terms of the outlook, I think the good news here is that it's it's positive. It's really quite positive uh, in terms of what uh, respondents told us. 55% optimistic, again, very or somewhat, versus only 20% pessimistic. Um, what I would say, though, is, again, large firms, in this case, they probably only had what I would characterize as mod a modestly better outlook, all were net positive. And I think more importantly, or equally importantly, this was the second consecutive survey where we had a net positive outlook among firms in terms of what, what, the, what the future holds. So I think there's a couple of things in there that you really grab onto that I think are really useful. So just some final thoughts before I start with some questions. And if you have any questions, I can uh, just prompt you early that if you wanna put um, uh, any questions in the chat box, Carmi's gonna help me go through some of those. And I'm happy to get as many questions as you wanna get, as you want to uh, stuff the chat box with. But a few final thoughts. So survey results are, I think are really quite positive in many respects, especially among larger firms, because those have an outsized impact on our current economic activity. But I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the fact that small firms and certain sectors and uh, minority and women-owned businesses they are continuing to lag in their recovery, and that matters. Um, small firms are are the seed corn of larger firms, and we have to pay attention to whether or not things are happening that are specifically disadvantaging small firms, minority and women owned businesses and others that if we're gonna have a full recovery, we really need to pay attention to the whole universe of firms. 
What I would say is that since this survey went out, the Delta variant has become much more pre much more prevalent, a little less prevalent here, thankfully, than it has been in, in other states in the U.S. I don't know whether or not that's going to continue, but that's one of the things that the Fed is going to be paying attention to. Generally speaking, some early evidence in terms of filling that space from July to here. Um, we ha I have done a survey with Minnesota Hospitality and Explore Minnesota of hospitality and tourism firms. And right now, it, it seems to suggest that there has been a fairly strong summer in many places as far as uh, hospitality and tourism. I've, I'm also ready to close a construction survey that goes out across the district. And generally speaking, what they're telling me is that activity has been pretty healthy, but I'm also hearing that future project pipelines are slowing down some. I don't, I kind of doubt whether or not that's uh, related specifically to the Delta variant, in part because it's not here in, in quite the same proportion. Um, I have a feeling it has more to do with some of the other things I talked about, uh, supply chain problems and, um, uh, excuse me, price increases. So again, it's going to be something that we're going to pay attention to. Moving forward, again, I just mentioned a couple of these upcoming surveys. So when this comes out, um, the, the survey closed today, and the results will probably be coming out of Hospitality Minnesota and Explore Minnesota. So you can look for more information from those organizations. The construction survey, it's currently out in the field, will be closed at the end of the week. And I will be doing a rec webinar exactly like this, only with the construction results. And that will happen on Friday, September 10th at 9 a.m. And Carmi, I'm hoping maybe the link for that registration can be put uh, into the chat box that folks can see as well, if that's possible. It is there right now. Wonderful. And with that, those are the, that's the end of my formal remarks. I would love to get some questions. Lots of questions in the chat box, Ron, and folks can certainly <laughs> submit additional ones using the chat feature at the bottom of Zoom. So let's just start with, you mentioned a couple of times this survey happened before the recent surge with the Delta variant. How is the Fed thinking about that surge and what it portends for the economy? Well, I would say it, it, we, we would go back to some of the things that we were talking about with the initial surge of COVID. We are going to be really watching consumer, uh, what, con how consumers react um, because, you, because they make up two thirds of the economy. We are going to be seeing, we're going to be watching to see whether or not they are changing behavior. Um, right now, we're not really seeing that in a lot of the data right now. It also is probably a little early. And, and again, up here in Minnesota and the, and the northern states, we're just not seeing as much of the surge itself. As if that continues or as it continues, we're going to be paying attention to whatever indicators we can get our hands on in terms of how consumers are changing their behavior or if they're not, quite frankly. In terms of some of the other sectors, I think particularly of construction, you know, we were hearing, we know that there's a lot of supply chain problems. We hear that from retailers as well. We were kind of hoping that as, and we were starting to see that as the, as the infection rate was going down, some of those supply chains were starting to repair themselves as you would expect. What we don't know is whether or not the, the new Delta surge is going to continue hampering those um, supply chains as much as they did previously, or maybe even do more, more damage. So those are some of the things that we're, we're trying to pay as much attention to. That obviously with prices, because if supply chains are problematic, I think that's gonna run into prices for, for different reasons. So those are some of the factors that we're really gonna be watching as we move forward. Thank you. Several other questions related to things that I know you get asked a lot, Ron. So tell us mm -hmm. what role you think unemployment benefits, the enhanced unemployment benefits mm -hmm. are paying in keeping folks out of the labor force right, right. now. So we will know, we will only know more after the fact, and we have a chance to really study. We do have some early evidence. We're actually, st we've started an initiative where we're actually starting to talk to more workers, mostly through job, uh, through intermediaries, those uh, organizations that work with uh, people looking for jobs. What we know right now is that it is a factor. What we don't know is how big a factor. Some evidence from workers suggests that it's not a great fact. It's not a huge factor, that it is one of a kind of a, um, an array of different obstacles that are either um, disincentivizing them to go back to work, like lack of affordable daycare. Um, there are other issues as well with the Delta variant coming. I think there's very real fear of the Delta variant among people. So I think the unemployment benefits are having an impact. What I would point out though, is that if you look at employment, the July numbers, uh, the state level July numbers just came out. And there are three states in the district that ended their um, unemployment, uh, unemployment um, 
involvement in the pandemic era programs early. North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Minnesota and Wisconsin did not. So if you look at um, employment from May to July, what you see is virtually very little difference in the employment growth in those states. From that period, um, Montana and South Dakota grew slightly better than Minnesota and Wisconsin, but it's like 0.7 versus 0.5, 0.6 and 0.7 to 0.5. North Dakota, on the other hand, grew only 0.2%. So if you average those all together, they're almost exactly the same. If you, if you add up the Dakotas and Montana and then Wisconsin and Minnesota and the percentage change, all about 5%. So we're not seeing a really clear signal that the elimination of those programs is having a huge effect. Now, again, we're not gonna know until this unwinds itself more. But what I would say is that it's a complicated issue. We're trying to learn as much as we can. And uh, we're hoping that employers get to find the, the labor they need for, um, for, their, uh, for their future needs. Also a lot of questions in the chat box about something that is on the minds of many folks, which is inflation. What mm -hmm. is the outlook there? Well, we, the, Federal's, um, the Federal Reserve was, I think, pretty um, public in its view that a lot of the price increases that we were seeing were, they, we expect to be transitory. Um, we, in part because um, a lot of the issues with regards to increases um, had to do with some supply chain problems. You can't necessarily increase supply of certain things like you can't automatically um, uh, or, or quickly put up a new um, a new steel mill to increase production or or uh, put up a new lumber um, a, a new um, lumber mill in order to get more lumber out to you know structural lumber for houses and stuff like that we expected some of those um, some of those problems to kind of correct themselves what we don't know is whether or not the Delta variant is going to kind of continue some of those pressures. Um, it's something that we, you know, we're gathering data on very regularly. I think this is maybe a bit of a curveball in terms of what we're hoping in terms of prices. But I, uh, again, the the Fed's position is that controlling the virus, we probably will have a decent um, a decent expectation of prices calming down. And speaking of steel and lumber and some of those industries that have had huge price increases, we did have a question in the chat about how price increases like that impact small businesses specifically. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that some yeah. businesses are able to pass those costs along to their mm -hmm. consumers. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, small businesses face pressure, more pressures in lots of different areas. And I think pricing is probably one of the big ones in that they don't have leverage to probably control pricing. They are probably more price takers as price setters when it comes to buying goods at the wholesale level. So I don't think there's any question that some of the price increases that we are seeing are probably one of the reasons why we are seeing poor revenue performance um, overall in terms of uh, uh, by firm size. So small businesses, you know, because they may be paying higher prices than maybe what a much larger competitor has to pay, that kind of goes into this, this issue of how businesses are doing in general. Um, if, if a company is able to control more of its costs while other competitors, big or small, are seeing higher prices, that's a competitive disadvantage. So I, I don't think there's any question that small firms are probably looking at the recent price increases with a lot of nervousness and, and that's very understandable. Let's turn to a question about economic growth. And I think this might be the last question that we have time for. There's a questioner asking, you know, what is the current rate of economic growth in the ninth district? And do we know how that compares to the other districts in the Federal Reserve? Um, you know, I haven't looked at, um, I haven't looked at the um, uh, gross domestic product for states uh, since it came out in the first quarter. Um, so we don't know like real recently. That's one of the problems with, with some of the government data that we used to really trust. It's not particularly up to date, especially during a pandemic when conditions are really changing very fast. Um, what, we, what I do know is that for the most part, um, we are kind of matching the overall U.S. trend. Um, some of the Western district states, um, South Dakota in particular, has been seeing stronger growth than some of the other district states. Um, I would say all of us are, are fairly close to the U.S. average. Um, again, it, it depends on kind of where you compare yourself to, though. In Great. terms of like, you know, just a benchmark, whether it's pre-pandemic or the trough of the pandemic, I would say we are not out of line um, in most metrics uh, with regards to the U.S. average. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Ron. And thank you all of you for joining us today. Before you close out of this Zoom, we hope that you'll complete our survey to give us a little feedback on this event. And we will be following up with you next week with an email with a link to the video of this event, as well as copies of Ron's slides. We also placed in the chat box a link to register for Ron's next webinar on conditions in the construction sector. So we hope that you'll join us for that on September 10th. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.